All right, base in your face from the place that allows the FBI to fulfill their sexual fantasies. Talking about HacksRadio.com. Big shout out, Mr. E, the fix, the rest of the crew. Now on to the updates. First up, LinkedIn being sued by a member for a hacking incident. Illinois resident Katie Zipriqua, sorry if I butchered that, filed a $5 million class action lawsuit against Lincoln in the U.S. District Court in Northern District of California on June 15th, claiming the business-orientated social networking site violated its own user agreement and pi- privacy policy. The move comes in relation to a security breach around June 6 when Lincoln admitted that encrypted passwords belonging to some 6.5 million of its 160 million users had been stolen and posted on the web. The incident resulted in hackers posting user information online, but it is not yet clear how much data they obtain. Uh, Ziprika, uh, who pays a monthly fee of $26.95 for a premium Lincoln account, says the networking site used an alarmingly weak encryption format whereby it failed to salt the passwords before storing them. The suit alleges that Lincoln failed to adequately protect members because it stored passwords in an unsalted SHA hashtag format which the uh, plaintiff contends is an outdated hashtag function first published in 1995 by the National Security Agency. Good Lord. By storing passwords in hash format without first salting them runs afoul of uh, conventional data protection methods and poses significant risk to the integrity of users' sensitive data, the suit claims. So let that be a warning to you Lincoln freaks. Next up, Intel CPU vulnerability can provide control of your system to the hacker. Isn't that outstanding? The U.S. Computer Emergency Readiness Team, or U.S. CERT, has disclosed a flaw in Intel chips that could allow hackers to gain control of Windows and other operating systems. The flaw has already been exploited on 64-bit versions of Microsoft Windows 7, FreeBSD, NetBSD, and there's a chance Apple's OS X may also be vulnerable. The flaw was disclosed, uh, the vulnerability in a security advisory released this week. Attackers could execute malicious code via kernel privileges or launch a local privilege escalation attack. VMware's virtualization software is not affected and neither are AMD's processors as they do not use SearsRet instruction whose incorrect handling causes the flaw or handle it differently. Many of the affected vendors have been pushed out an update that diffuses the flaw. Wonderful. Great. Now, out of India, Indian ISPs get court relief. The torrent sites have been unblocked. After weeks of confusion and frustration with blocked websites, the mess finally looks to be clearing. Indians are all heaving a sigh of relief because their ISPs have been unblocked to access the file sharing, video streaming, bit torrent sites that included Pirate Bay, Torrents EU, Vimeo, and others as well. And hackers have been charged for hacking into the U.S. Energy Department. Andrew James Miller, 23-year-old resident of Devon, Pennsylvania, was arrested on Thursday and charged with one count of conspiracy, two counts of computer fraud, and one count of access device fraud, according to a statement issued by the Justice Department's Criminal Division. According to the indictment between 2008 and 2011, Miller and others allegedly remotely hacked into computer networks belonging to RNK Technologies, Telecommunications, rather, Incorporated, a Massachusetts company, Crispin Porter and Buzzkey Inc., a Colorado advertising agency, the University of Massachusetts, and the U.S. Department of Energy and other institutions and companies. The indictment alleges that when Miller hacked into the computers, he obtained other users' access credentials to be compromised. His computers, he and his co-conspirators, then allegedly sold access to these computer networks as well as other access credentials. And this last post from InfoWorld, hacker group demands idiot tax from payday lender. Hacker group Rex Monday has made good on its promise to publish thousands of loan applicant records that swipe from AmeriCash advance after the payday lender refused to fork over between $15,000 and $20,000 in extortion fee, or in Rex Monday's terms, an idiot tax. 
The group announced on June 15th that it was able to steal AmeriCash customer data because the company had left a confidential page unsecured on one of its servers. This page allows its affiliates to see how many loan applicants they recruited and how much money they made. According to the group's post in dpace.com, not only was this page unsecured, it was actually referenced in their robot's text file, Bad, bad move, guys. Rex Mundy not only used the post to chastise AmeriCash for purported lackluster data security, it also took a swipe at the company's business model, criticizing it for targeting low-income workers with vastly overpriced loans. AmeriCash APR's annual percentage rates range from 353% to up to 1,386%. Good Lord. Rex Monday isn't the first hacker group to claim moral high ground when choosing targets. A group called Ugnazis leaked and deleted customer data stolen from online billing service provider WHMCS last month, according to the company providing services to known scammers. Also last month, a group called the Unknowns revealed it was exposing security holes in the IT systems of prominent organizations such as NASA and branches of the U.S. military to force them to improve their defenses. Well, as you already knew, the hackers are running wild. That's all for today. Hopefully we'll be back with you on Friday for more updates. Much love. Many thanks to HacksRadio.com. And uh, if you want any more information, just go and subscribe to TheHackerNews.com. And uh, the link for the InfoWorld post will be below. Much love. Many thanks.